Hello my friends and welcome to another watercolor demonstration. This reference photo is from unsplash.com. The name is up there and we're going to paint a lovely beautiful parrot and they're so colorful and beautiful. Um, right now I'm using my watercolor pencil and I am just sketching in the basic shapes, so triangles and circles and squares and just getting the proportions right of this beautiful creature. And then I go in and I refine and press down just a little bit more to get the actual shapes down for the basis of our watercolor. So I will just put this on speed and you can watch the drawing. Now that I have all of my basic lines down that I want to paint from with this parrot, I just came in with my fine brush and I think this is like a number two or three brush that I just bought. I love it. And um, I'm going around just with a wet brush and just making sure that a lot of these lines are very, um, you know, if you wet them with the watercolor pencil, they're going to set in. So I'm just going around my drawing and feathering out a little few pieces. So my drawing really shows, um, like right there I made a mistake and I'm just going in and feathering it out all through the face. 
so that I have like a light blue and there's a lot of wrinkles in the face so I know that it didn't harm. This is why I love using a watercolor pencil when I draw because I can remove um, things and blur them out or I can make them more pronounced. I'm gonna go take my number 12 brush, and this brush is beautiful. It's a Princeton, I believe, and it comes to a fine point. And when you press down with it, it also makes very thick strokes, so I can fill in large areas as well, and I can make beautiful shapes with it. I'm grabbing my Copal Blue, I believe, and I watered it down to like a T consistency, so it's pretty transparent. This is our basis for our watercolor, um, feather part of the bird, all the blue area. And I'm going to do a wet on wet technique here in the crown over his eye where it goes from green to blue. So I am just really following with my brush the way the feathers are going. And I'm gonna also use the tip of the brush to push out from the edge, that clean edge, some tiny little feather strokes so it looks more natural and more organic. You can definitely grab a green in your palette, and this would be maybe a hooker's green, but you can also mix the green by using, um, like I did here, a kind of an Indian yellow with a teeny bit of brown into my already blue mixture that I made. And I'm just dropping it in and also creating some feather strokes into the blue, and this is wet on wet, and it is not super wet. Um, it's going to blend really nicely and, and almost stay in that area that I have it. And whatever the watercolor does is just going to make a beautiful um, background to our feathers. And my water well is on the right and I'm always splashing water on my, <laughs> my illustration. But if you dab it right away, it should disappear. So here I'm just dabbing a little bit more um, mixture in there, a little bit darker towards the front of the crown near the beak, just so this all blends together when we're ready to, um, you know, just have our feathers more uh, detailed later on. So this is the underpainting for all of the feathers, and you're just going to really stroke in the way the feathers grow so that it moves in that direction, and hopefully you'll get a beautiful gradation here for the top of the head. since the edge of that is still wet where I left off and wet enough so that it's going to blend together and not create such harsh edges but now we're getting to the top the back of his um, head there where the feathers are more pronounced and they look a little bit longer and see what I did there I splashed my water across my page and then I thought that's kind of cool maybe I'll do that in the end so I, I will definitely add more in the end. So I guess I decided here to add my yellow and this is sort of an orange yellow very it's more yellow than orange. Um, I don't remember the name of it I'm using my Mission Gold paints and so but in your palette just pick a similar color to that.
It's also pretty watered down, um, kind of a tea consistency, and I'm using the tip of my brush to bring it into the facial area. And if some of it blends into the blue, that's okay. It's, um, it's a beautiful parrot. It has beautiful colors. So I'm getting close there and touching a little bit, and a little bit I'm not. And so when this yellow dries, then we'll add more blue to the outer part of the head. So I'm getting a feeling of where I want these um, feather strokes to go. I'm, I'm loving this brush because I can make the tip of the feathers and also the broad strokes of the feathers. And I am also making sure that I am moving my brush in the direction of the growth of the feathers. Right now I'm adding a little bit of the more shadow areas of his chest, which is a more orangey yellow that I added to the left side of his breastplate there and um, trying to give a little bit of dimension to some of those feathers. And yet again, we're just doing the strokes. Um, they're gonna blend together and it's just a basis. We're going to add more detail and bring out some feathers later. And the idea for any kind of painting for me is to have some lost and found edges. Not everything should be sharp and in detail. You should have some areas that you want the eye to go to be in detail and then, or just to pronounce an area and, and bring it out. Usually things that are closer to you and things further back should be a little bit more fuzzed out. So think about that even with a small area of feathers. So the tiny feathers you, you wouldn't see every little detail. It sort of looks fuzzy if you squint your eye. You're just seeing blocks of color. And then you're just going to, at the end, bring out the details that are closest to you. So while you're waiting for the yellow to dry, move on to an area of your painting that is not touching it. So let's move to the beak. And I made a, a wash of a bluish brown, bluish black. And um, I'm going to be glazing over this. I'm trying to be careful here to, you know, just make sure I get a clean line around the edge of the beak. The tip of the beak is has a little light on it so that's going to be more gray and then we're just going to add more black to the side of the beak and now I'm getting you know towards the bottom of the beak same thing we're just going to fill it in with a basic color the bottom of the beak would be darker and the top of it is going to have a little bit more light If you squint your eyes at the parrot image, you can see that the beak and the black feathers underneath, I mean, they're just really one color shade. And that's really great because it rests your eye a little bit to focus more on the details later on. So if you hear a chicken in the background, it's because I have chickens and I'm recording this outside. So I'm going in and just like the other feathers, I am filling in the area. I'm going in the direction of the way the feathers move. I'm using the tip of the brush to push out in areas, the tips of the feathers where they stick out. And right here, I'm giving myself a little bit of an idea of where the lines on his face are, those beautiful markings on his face. And it just helps me to, when I work all over the painting, to get a good feel of you know what needs to be done next. Because it's hard to create a well-balanced painting if you're just working in one section at a time. And I know people who do work on one section at a time, and that's really great if you can do that. Um, a lot of artists I know that are very advanced actually can work on one section at a time, but for me, I like to work all over the paintings so I can judge my darks and my lights and my hues and everything together to know what I need next.
As I continue working with the beak, I'm continually putting glazes of a darker black onto the beak area carefully so I can still show that it has a form to it and yet it has a shadow area to it. And I do feel that it's still a little bit too light and it's he's got a very black beak and I feel the the way the light is shining on it has a bluish tinge so I want to convey that in my painting. But I'm much happier with the way the beak looks now and there's still like that crack between the upper and lower beak. There's the tongue is in there and we're going to fill that in later and I'm going to go back and do a little bit more work on the feathers at this point. I'm using that same blue wash we used in the beginning and you can see here I started painting in just the shadow areas in one section of the feathers. I think it just helped me to define what I wanted to what I was trying to achieve here and I brought the blue down and I added water to the edge of it just to feather it out you know just so it's not a harsh edge there so you're just seeing um, it fade out to nothing and I'm just going to keep applying my blue to it and the strokes of the feathers and letting it bleed down in a little bit into that plain wash area so that it looks like a, a light transition.
while that blue is drying a little bit I'm going to go into the face and start adding some of that skin texture and uh, the grays around the, the eyes and also around the, the cheeks. I took that green color I was using and just made it a little bit more gray and a little bit darker and brought it into the crown area above the beak just to show some feather movement there and it's it's kind of wet and it's um it's kind of cool so we're just going to even go back there later and add more detail but you're starting to see the emergence of the feathers and um, he's really starting to come together now. I took my black and I started to go around the face and add those beautiful markings in and also drawing around the eye and just adding some of those dark feather areas where his head is separated from his neck. It's very dark in there and I'm just making little tick marks in the direction of where the feathers are growing and this is starting to bring out the features of the bird.
here I'm painting in a dark black inside the between the two beak areas. We're going to come back in a few minutes and I'm going to lift off a little bit of the top part of the bottom beak just around the edge just so you could see that it is a three-dimensional object. So my wash wasn't a very black wash, so I did go over it again to make it even blacker, but sometimes um, when I'm painting these fine areas, I like to go a little bit lighter just in case I don't like what I did and I can wipe it off quickly. And when I'm happy with where I put my marks, I will usually go back and just darken them up a little bit. If you can get in one full swoop, you know, sometimes it looks better, but for me, um, I take little baby steps at times and I like to make sure I put it down in the right spot. With a finer point brush, I'm coming in here with my blue. It's 
it's got more pigment in it and less water so it's more dry you don't want a really wet brush here it's it's now you're painting on kind of like a pen and you are just going and really observing those feathers the details in the feathers and adding those little strokes where you see the feathers now I'm going under each feather and adding a teeny bit of water to give it a, like a little shadow so this feather is on top of this feather is on top of this feather The top of the head, I really just added some strokes to show the movement of the feathers, and I didn't go too detailed with that. So, you know, if, if you're far away, you see that there's feathers there, but um, the more pronounced feathers are on the neck area. I'm using my fine tipped brush with just a teeny bit of water on it. It's not wet really at all. Just wet enough to lift the top edge of that beak off so I get a, the look of it being, you know, the edge inside part of his beak.
I mix my darker orange and my um, base color of that yellow to be a you know just like a dry mixture and I'm brushing in just like a, you would with a pen little strokes and really trying to observe the way the feathers go I'm squinting my eyes to just get so I'm not overly detailed but it is also enough to show that it is feathered area I also lifted a little bit of the black out of the feathers underneath his chin in the black area and I'm even adding more darks to it. So it's kind of a push and pull when you're doing watercolors. You're always making these decisions like, you know, I could just make that a little teeny bit lighter and I could make this a little teeny bit darker and I could blend that just a teeny bit more. I can make that edge a little sharper. So it, you're always thinking of these things as you're going in and that's kind of the fun of it. And to me, this is very meditative and uh, a lot of fun, and I really love the way he came out. He's a beautiful bird, and I love painting animals. I hope you do too. I added a lot of black back to the beak again and I feel like that it really made it pop. This is when you, sometimes you need to take a step back and just look at your painting and say, what does it need? It really needs more pop in the beak or uh, it needs a couple more feather lines or maybe I put too many feather lines somewhere. And in my illustrations I'm demonstrating, I am just showing you my process and sometimes I make mistakes, but we are all learning and growing. So even though I've been painting for years, um, sometimes I make mistakes or um, I don't like a decision I made and sometimes I splatter water on or coffee <laughs> on my painting. Uh, I mean it's all real and it's part of the process and to me this is um, just fun and I hope you're having fun. So thank you again and please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button. That would be awesome so I know that people are watching and if you want to leave a nice comment I would really love that and thank you so much and I'll see you in my next videos.